Hey guys, uh, this is my second guide. In this video, I will discuss how you can break through the stone formation with nature. I will show you how I do it. I'm sure there are other ways, but I will uh, demonstrate my own strategies. I will also try to explain how the workshop works, because uh, uh, it is a bit confusing for many players. Okay, so when I say the stone formation, I'm talking about this common defense stone users have. Uh, two groups of giants in the front, Cyclops and another unit in the back, with a few different variations of this. Uh, usually it's Cyclops and Overseers, sometimes the main force is just one of them. Uh, so a lot of people have a problem with this formation. It's a very strong formation, I often have a problem with it myself. Uh, but it can definitely be broken. So the problem is the skill of the Giants. Uh, you basically have to kill them twice before you can hit the back lines. And this of course gives the Cyclops a lot of time to uh, mow down your forces. There's a few key factors that need to be taken into account here. So first thing is that the defender will always have the advantage for two reasons. One, he has traps, and I will discuss with which traps I like. Two, he has defense bonus from the wall models. Uh, it would of course depend on their level, but this gives a nice boost. Okay, second thing you need to take into account is that there's usually a big difference between a wall with a main hero on it and a wall with a general. So a general will be uh, much easier to break through. Uh, because they are not as strong as the hero and do not have his skills. So if you can catch him while his hero is away, your chances will increase. Uh, and this is true across all gods. Alright, so you have to be a lot more strategic with nature. Uh, its main weakness is that it has no mass attacks other than the destroyers. Uh, if the destroyer was easier to get, nature would have a much easier time. Uh, so with the destroyers I could clear a lot of very strong players. But uh, until that moment comes, we need to make do with what we have. So unlike stone and water, uh, with nature it's very difficult to concentrate your power into one unit. Uh, because that unit can only hit one fixed enemy. The only exception is of course the forest guard, which uh, if you're lucky he will throw his spear around at the right enemies. So you kind of have to spread your forces around. And what makes this formation much harder to break is the reserves. The reserves, in my opinion, work best against nature, uh, so because no one has a mass attack to take them out at once, uh, they waste the unit's turns. And this is usually a major pain in the ass. Uh, stone formation without the reserves would be easier to take down. So I'll explain quickly how the workshop works. Uh, there is a common misconception about the reserves. Uh, you don't need more than one reserve. The only difference it would make is that instead of replacing your unit with one archer, it will replace it with two or more which would often still be one because it is percentage based. So uh, one reserve trap will replace each unit in your squad with one soldier one time, except for your hero or general who will not be replaced, and keep that in mind because this will be relevant later on. Now as for arrows and spikes, uh, so first of all it will depend on the level of their research, but other than that it's simple. Uh, the more arrows or spikes you have, the more damage they will do. So some people build as much as three workshops, to fit in more arrows or spikes to make more damage. Uh, this is definitely an option, but that would mean you have less barracks and hospitals. So this is a decision uh, you need to make. Okay, so before I get into the actual strategy, I just want to say that having strong units and strong heroes is always a plus. As I said in my previous video, uh, you, can, you can't expect to clear level 5 Cyclops with level 1 Halflings. So now while the level of your units you can't always change very quickly, uh, the level and strength of your hero you can, so you should always level him up and give him the best weapons. Uh, my next video will probably be about the hero, uh, I will explain exactly how best to build him. Okay, now into actual strategy. So first thing you need to understand is the skill of the Cyclops. Uh, when they shoot into the back, they will also hit the unit closest to it in the front, and vice versa. So you really want to avoid having the Cyclops uh, shoot into the middle of your forces, because then they will hit both units in the front. So to do that, I would usually put my halflings in the middle, so their skill will force the, Cyclo the Cyclops to shoot at the sides. So essentially this becomes a race against time. Can you get to the Cyclops before they take out your army or not? Uh, so this is my standard formation, though I will change sides here and there depending on the situation. I usually wouldn't know the formation of the enemy castle because most good players uh, would hide it. So it's often a guessing game. But I would like to put my hero against the Cyclops with one gargoyle in front of it uh, and elves with forest guards on the other side. 
with half lengths in the middle. So the idea is that my units would usually go first with the hope that I would take out the giants in the first turn. After that my hero will dodge the first attack of the cyclops. And if I'm lucky, uh, so would the gargoyle. That is the reason the gargoyle is there. Now many things can go wrong with this strategy of course. Uh, for example if the enemy hero returns fire to my hero and wastes my first dodge. Or anyone else wastes my hero's first dodge. Uh, sometimes I can recover because my hero is still pretty tough. Uh, but this can uh, sometimes mess things up. Uh, also, the uh, reserves make it uh, much harder to get to the Cyclops in time. Uh, but this is the, the gist of it. Also, there's the unpredictability of the Forest Guard's throw. Uh, many times they would throw it over the giant's head right where you want it, uh, but sometimes this can mess up all your plans. For example, if they throw it at the Cyclops in the first turn, and then the Cyclops shoots at them and uh, hits three of your units instead of your hero. Uh, so of course a lot of here is reliant on chance, uh, but this strategy works for me very often. Uh, but there's also another uh, formation which I discovered recently. I was able to break through the wall of a guy with it after I failed a few times with my standard strategy. Uh, his wall was very tough with all of his uh, firepower essentially concentrated in his uh, level 4 cyclops. I just couldn't get to his Cyclops in time, especially with his hero in the castle and with the reserves. So I decided to try to put a minimum of forces to take out the Cyclops and concentrate as much power as I could in my elves, who in terms of uh, firepower are my strongest. So what helped here is that the reserves don't work on the hero, so uh, my elves could shoot at the Cyclops next. Uh, so this strategy could work also, uh, with two gargoyles in the front, a few halflings in the middle and a lot of elves but uh, of course this requires uh, some amount of luck as well. So these are two of my strategies. Uh, you are welcome to try them or experiment with your own strategies. Uh, one thing I'd like to say is that yes, it is a bit difficult to play with nature, uh, but I see it as a challenge and I like challenge. Uh, also I would like to thank Lucas T in the comment section on YouTube from my previous video who told me how the forest guards choose who to throw their spear at. So it turns out uh, they shoot at the fastest unit. And then once they slow down that unit, they will move to the next fastest unit. So uh, thanks Lucas, this solved the mystery for me. Also I saw a request on Facebook to do a similar video to the one I did on the nature units, but on water units. So uh, I never played with water, I will have to do some research on that first. Uh, I might do that video once I have the proper knowledge. So this is all for this video, hope this was useful. Uh, if you disagree with me on anything, uh, please let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please uh, like and subscribe to be notified for future videos. And if you have any ideas or requests for specific guides, I would be very happy to hear them. So uh, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.